Good morning, friends. We welcome you all on this third day of webinar series of Bank Branch Audit. Now we are going to play ICEI Moto Song. I request all the participants to put their right hand on their heart. Friends, as you are all witnessing this webinar, it's a two way benefit. One, that we all are able to learn. And second, all the funds of this webinar is going to be used for relief in COVID. So efforts of our chairman is there to put all these things in a proper place. With these words, I welcome our dynamic chairman of Ahmedabad branch, CA Fanil Shah, to address for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Bishan Bhai. The speaker of the day, Sia Abhay Chajarji from Bhopal, our own regional council member and the creator of this bank branch audit series, CA Hitesh Pomalji, uh, present with us on the panel, CA of Gandhidam branch, CA Karan Thakkar, the chairman of Gandhi Dam branch, the other chairmen of various branches joining with us, CA Vinay Sakarya from Rajkot, CA Bhavesh Thakkar from Anand branch, CA Manoj Goyal from Bhavnagar branch, CA Jitendra Thakkar from Bhuj, and CA Dipesh Bhut from Jamnagar. Uh, and our own secretary, sir, uh, Bishan Bhai, I will, and all the members from all over the Gujarat, and various participants are also joining from all over the India. So I welcome you all to this third day of our bank branch series. Friends, again, I request you all to donate to our ICI COVID fund. And I also request you all to join in research. And I have something more to share with you today. Friends, we know that ICI is for the members, of the members, and by the members. So, friends, if you are sitting at home and you are working from home, along with working from home, you want to work for our own alma mater, our own ICI, because whatever we are, credit is because of ICI, then friends, ICAI has come up with various initiatives, like you can help in preparing the case studies for students, you can act as an examiner, you can help in creating MCQs for students, and you can also join in writing articles and research. All the details are available on the website of ICI. And friends, what is the unique thing of this, or what is the added advantage of this? No geographical boundaries will stop you from serving our own alma mater. And this service is also on a remunerative. So I appeal you all, all those who are eligible, all those who are capable, let's also utilize. Because see, you are utilizing this time to upgrade your skills. You are utilizing this time to serve our nation. Because as Bishan rightly said, we are going to give this to a PM. I mean, we are going to use this in a COVID relief fund. So along with that, why not serve our own alma mater, mother ICI? So I openly request all to take the utmost benefit of this unique opportunity we are having in this lockdown time. So thank you, friends. And now I request Hitesh Pomal, sir, to give an opening remarks to this particular session. Thank you very much, Chairman, sir. 
and first of all very good morning to all of all, all of you morning sir. today as rightly said bishan bhai has rightly said that this is the third day of this webinar on bank branch audit series for the year 2019-20 and today we will try to understand the important aspect of the long form audit report which we generally call lfar and the same was introduced as you all know the same was introduced by the reserve bank of india i think in the year 1985 and which was last revised in the year 2003 so with right. the, for this year we were expecting that reserve bank will come up with the latest format of the lfar but i think it will be in the next year that is 2021 probably as far as my information for that development is there secondly as we all know that lfar of the branches is, a, is in a question and answer form format however the lfar for the central statutory audit is in a narrative format to explain the importance of branch lfar to the central statutory auditor for final compilation of the lfar of the bank today we have with us a very learned faculty from the popal ca abhay chajar ji abhay sir has the vast experience of the banking sector since long and he is associated with the banks many banks in various capacities including the central statutory audit of the bank we were to we were the joint auditors in uh, state bank of india i welcome abhay sir and with this may i Listen, boy. Uh, now I request Karan Thakkar to introduce the speaker, sir. Uh, thank you, Kanjal, boy. Good morning, everyone of you. C. A. Abhay Chhatrapati. Qualification includes post-graduation in commerce. It is a, it is Article Two from A. Production and Company Mumbai. It's also a diploma in information system audit. B. H. Dan certificate from Sir Vijay Mayer. It's a member of C. S. Since the year two thousand. is a practicing as a partner in sir sagar and company in the world since 2000 and for audit and insurance practices uh, he has been a statutory and internal auditor of various public and private limited companies government corporation statutory and concurrent uh, audit of banks also has been done at icai level he was elected as chairman of the bhopal branch of circ of icai in the year 2011 12 and he has held various position in the branch He got also elected as the RCM for the period 2013-16 and 16-19. He has held position as chairman of SICASA, vice chairman treasurer of CIRC for the period 2013-16, and was chairman of Central India Regional Council for the year 16-17. He was member in various standing and non-standing committee of CIRC of ICI and was co-opted in the various committees like valuation standard board committees of ICI for the year 19-20. He has been speaker at various forums on the topics like Companies Act, Internal Audit, Bank Audit, PR Review, Forensic Audit, and has taken various presentation for ICI and uh, has uh, delivered to the students at various level in GMCS and orientation. His articles are published in CIRCs and branch newsletters also. As an extracurricular activity in the process of giving back to the society, he is an active Rotarian and is involved in very others various others community services. He was the president of the Rotary Club of Bhopal and has position as assistant governor for the year 2016-17. He is also a trustee of his own uh, trust, charged and charitable trust, where they encourage students by giving them cash rewards. The students of IPCC and final at Bhopal and CIRC level, and scholarship to students who are on need basis. He is a very active sports person also and takes part in cricket also. He has been playing for the Bhopal uh, branch cricket team since last past ten years and has won many prizes also. I think he is an all-rounder, and I am sure that uh, he'll give us an all-rounder view of LFAR today. Uh, what do you have, sir? Thank you very much. So, uh, should I start? Now? Yeah. Thank yes, you so sir. much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karan, for introducing. Uh, i think you mention everything and generally you know when you are on the dais of course this is a webinar but when you are on a dais you would like to speak as less as you can because the members are waiting to listen actually the real topic you know when they have come on this sunday morning 
of course you know very difficult to even know which day today is of course you know sunday is not like a sunday because every day is now sunday sitting at home thank you so much yes. uh, respected chairman uh, of panel by secretary vishen bhai other distinguished committee members and chairman from other branches we have uh, six branches i am told who are participating uh, in this webinar on my topic on lfar which is to be to be discussed say next uh, 80 85 minutes and uh, of course my very good friend and uh, you know a colleague uh, hitesh bhai who will always been uh, guiding uh, or we have been working together in various audits uh, of course one of the audits which recently both of us completed was state bank uh, as a central statutory auditors so hitesh bhai is always a pleasure to listen to you and you've been in uh, you know a guiding uh, friend all the time so far as the bank audit is concerned and uh, thanks to the branch for giving me this opportunity it's it's you know always good to you know whenever you learn it's always important that you unlearn and share your experience your knowledge with the members of our fraternity so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity is always a privilege for me to speak among the members and like i said you know we keep learning from each other interaction and i'm sure when i go through my presentation if there are questions uh, bishan bhai would uh, list down those questions if i'm able to answer immediately of course i'll try to do it in the time which is available if not we can take up those question later and another very good initiative of uh, the branch chairman and the team is that any fund collected has been contributed to covid uh, 19 uh, pm fund or through the institute they are contributing whatever fund is being received at the branch so a very good initiative and being a member of ICI you know the uh, one of uh, the second largest and a noble profession it's always to you know keep uh, contributing whether in terms of knowledge or in terms of such uh, you know situations which arises maybe you know once in say i would say 10 15 or 20 years where we need to really you know go to ici and help with whichever best way we can do and the initiative of our honorable president vice president team of council and all the regional council members so with this i'll straight away go to the uh, the presentation uh, i'll uh, and uh, i am am i audible clearly panel by hitesh bhai uh, bishan bhai Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Please. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, you can see the screen now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, as all know, my topic uh, is uh, on uh, the long form audit reporting, the questionnaire which we have to do during the bank branch audit. Now, just a little, uh, you know, uh, couple of initial two three slides. Of course, your two webinar sessions already taken. One by Hitesh Bhai and the other is by Niranjan Ji. and hitesh bhai spoke on iraq norms nirandran ji spoke on overview planning and what is the importance of documentation mere ye kuch initial four three four slides i would just touch upon quickly for uh, i would say five to six minutes of what my experience and the importance of the documentation and uh, i would say the importance of planning before you come into the bank branch audit see uh, we all know Uh, the audit by the branch statutory auditors is done uh, of course this year uh, the date get, got extended it would be done mostly after 30th of april which we foresee now situation as on date is very uncertain but jo situation jis hisab se hai in different states mein uh, my uh, understanding is that it should not start before first week of may or may go even extended for another say uh, 6 7th or 8th of may uh when we complete the audit we submit our report to the central statutory auditors then after the central statutory auditors complete their report finalize the financial statements and is sub submitted to the reserve bank and then there is a long form audit report which is prepared within 60 days of signing of the financial statement so that is then further submitted to reserve bank now as a practice which reserve bank for last i would say 4 5 years been very strict and as a practice wo generally audit is carried out by rbi in the month of october november this year maybe by end of november or december so when rbi is carrying an audit now rbi has been very strict and they do a annual financial inspection now if there is any divergence which is observed 
in asset classification of the bank done by a branch statutory auditor and classification which reserve bank has observed there are letter of caution being issued issued to the central statutory auditors through the bank and then in turn central auditors would send it to the branch auditors because pehle jo ek rbi used to only cover the top branches now they are selecting branches zone wise even c category branches reserve bank of india is selecting for branch audit so friends this is very my earnest request that documentation would be really key because aaj jo hum audit karte hain ye statutory audit we do once in a year so whatever documents we collect during the three days four days or six days you spend depending on the size of the branch whatever documents you collect that documents as a permanent audit file working paper or a working paper file you keep it for a period of at least three years i would suggest my and you have as a requirement of i think institute you have to keep it for minimum seven years because agar koi dc mein case aata hai to at least seven years ki documentation is required to be kept so please at least make sure jab aap branch audit kare so any such communication which is done with the branch with the officials of the branch or with the regional authority or controlling authority it is kept on record as an evidence of your work performed because these are the evidences would help you for any applicable legal regulatory requirements or when you get any such letter of caution from reserve bank of india so this is very important please make sure if an account is to be classified as npa should be done if you are not classifying the account as npa there has to be a complete correspondence with the branch why it is not done so if it is required to be qualified in audit report it should be qualified if it has to be given in the audit report as other matters it should be sent in other matters to the central statutory auditors of course then it has to be elaborated in lfar also but should be part of the audit report so please make sure that your standards on auditing which talks about audit documentation is very helpful for us as an evidence of an audit done plus also as an evidence when a peer review is done by a peer reviewer in future it helps you to produce such evidences documents checklists formats which you have used for the bank branch audit these are three important circulars which already i'm sure have been discussed i'll just quickly uh, talk about the master circular last which was issued was 1st july 2015 and this circular which i am talking about is on income recognition and provisioning norms so this is a very important circular which everyone should have after that there are master directions been issued for any regulatory changes once the bank branch audit is allotted to you the bank also sends the closing circulars the closing guidelines to all the branches kindly speak to the branch incumbent or the branch head and obtain a copy of closing circulars closing guidelines with respect to advances with respect to balance sheet with respect to profit loss or any item which would have impact on the financial statement or on the lfar questionnaire which is to be filled by you before you leave the branch so please have a copy you should get the copy in soft and read the instructions carefully because this will help you to plan an effective audit to complete the timely audit we all know time is always a constraint for doing a branch bank branch audit और ऑडिट करने के बाद आप कोई डॉक्यूमेंट कोई कम्युनिकेशन अगर कुछ मिस हो जाता है देर इज एनी वर्किंग पेपर यू वांट इन फ्यूचर तो व्हेन यू कॉल बैक मे आफ्टर थ्री मंथ्स और फोर मंथ्स और सिक्स मंथ्स दैट पर्सन हिमसेल्फ इज नॉट अवेलेबल द मैनेजर इज चेंज द स्टाफ इज चेंज सो इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट देन टू ऑप्टेन सो प्लीज हैव ऑल दीज क्लोजिंग सर्कुलर्स एंड रेलिवेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स वाइल अंडरटेकिंग द ऑडिट a guidance note of our bank audit institute has already issued it is available on the website friends very important updations are there there is a section a for central statutory auditors and a section b for branch statutory auditors i'm sure most of you must be doing branch audit so section b is very important because it gives the list of appendix all these relevant documents which has to be prepared during the audit with respect to letter of engagement with respect to management representation 
with respect to the audit report format in uh, the SA 700, 705 and 706 with respect to the audit program. So all these is available in the guidance note under section B of the guidance note. Please download and go through it once. Also, whatever regulatory changes which has happened during the year, new circulars which are issued by Reserve Bank and which would have impact on the audit of the financial statement of the branch and the advances or the LF, uh, LFAR questionnaire. You would have all these updations which are done every year in the guidance note. So please download this copy and go through it once. Overview planning, uh, uh, the appointment letters received, uh, we send uh, acceptance, corresponding declaration is also should be obtained from the partners in compliance with standards on quality control, which is a requirement of the standards on auditing. So please ensure that a declaration also is obtained from all the partners or all the professional qualified personnel who are involved in the audit of that bank branch. No objection we sent. Please make sure that it is sent uh, by email. And if you have the details of previous auditors, contact details, please speak to them and ensure that a confirmation is received over mail. Also, because you will be receiving uh, no objection from the auditor who has been appointed of your branch, which you did last year. So usko bhi ensure, please ensure that you send a reply confirming that you don't have any objection as part of the compliance of Code of Ethics. Issue of engagement letter. Generally, this is taken care at head office, the agreeing the terms of engagement. But I would like there is a standards on auditing 210 which requires that an engagement letter should be signed. I would suggest and uh, would request everyone to have this engagement letter, take it with you to the branch or branch co a copy summit karde. If you can obtain an acknowledgement, please do it. Generally, you'll have a problem ki wo they'll not sign and they would be discussing with the regional office or the controlling authority. And in terms, central auditors may also be involved that this is we are taking centrally. But at least part of your documentation, you should have an audit engagement which is prepared and kept in the file get an acknowledgement if you can or send it over mail to the branch so far as your responsibility you can send it and take a copy as, as an acknowledgement if you can an inquiry letter you know before you start you get the details of the branch you send an inquiry letter and request the branch that these are the documents you require before commencement of audit i have a format which i have prepared for my audits i'll share it with uh, the branch team and also send it uh, to Bishan by Fennel by so that they can circulate among all of you. This will help you that before you commence the audit, you have information in advance, whether in terms of you know the size of the branch you are undertaking, what are the advances, what are the deposits, what are the audits which have undertaken in that branch, if there is any fraud which has been done at the branch, or any such information would help you through the inquiry letter. An audit program has to be prepared uh, for each branch you undertake. This would help you to at least, you know, complete the audit timely and effectively. So this gives all the items of the balance sheet, profit and loss account, and the LFAR questionnaire information is all available in the audit program. This audit program format also is available in the ICAI guidance note of 2020. A pre-audit meeting with the branch officials has to be done before you communicate generally depends on the size of the branch agar last size branch hai ya medium size ya bigger branches mein hum pre audit meeting kar sakte hain if it's a small size you can reach the branch spend couple of hours with the branch officials and you can start the audit following reports uh, these are you know audit reports if there is any audit which is undertaking at the branch whether it is concurrent or any rbi inspection or uh, the systems audit the risk focus internal should be obtained and should be uh, thoroughly seen by you and your team before you commence the audit. Concurrent audit generally happens in March because of this situation. This year, March concurrent audit will not be completed before you finish your audit. So if the concurrent auditor is an internal auditor of the bank himself, then please take a confirmation from the concurrent auditor that there are no material observations and any of such observations persisting at the branch have all been complied with and there are no material major observations which needs to be covered 
in the LFAR. So please obtain a confirmation or obtain report if the audit is completed. This is a system generated some important reports which I have listed down. Of course, my PPT could be shared with uh, all the uh, participants. So this would help you. These are system generated reports which you can ask the branch if the branch is not competent or there is no IT person, then you should try that they should arrange you from the controlling authority because these are certain reports which you know would help you as an effective documentation and immediately based on the reports you can issue an MOC like I'll I'll just give you some of the examples of the report like standard agriculture non agriculture advances where date of last credit is more than 90 days old or where credits during 90 days is less than interest debited or reports where there are no credits so these are you know reports which could be generated from the system and can be obtained and if there are any deviations with respect to any irac norms then an moc can be given immediately like npa date is invalid now we have an npa which was classified in 31st march 2019 and again if you see in 20 that either the account is not appearing because either it is upgraded or there is any change in the date in between or the same NP account has a date as 31st March 20. So please obtain such list and then the list of provisioning if it is done with a certain percentage of less based on the IRAC norms can be obtained. Then, then there is a list of review, renew if there are pending for more than 180 days, if there are advances where stock statements pending for 180 days, then there is a, li uh, a list or a, a report which can be generated you know we all know as per irac the account is classified borrow wise and not account wise as npa so if you have you know three or four accounts of a particular borrower this list would help you to identify if there are any account if there are two accounts being classified as npa and two are left as not NPA, you can immediately downgrade those accounts and classify as per the previous classification of those two accounts. And list of potential NPA can be generated one for December and one for March, just to see little movement or whatever movements in the accounts have had with respect to December and in the month of March. So coming to my topic, this was an introduction. I thought I could just uh, say spend five, 10 minutes coming to my topic of long form audit reporting. So as Hitesh Bhai already mentioned, this was introduced in 1985 and the current format which we are using was in last modified in 2002. So 2002 and three, the same format has been applicable and now also has been used for the year 1920. It focused not only on the advances part, but operational areas of the branch, a complete questionnaire, I would request all the members, participants and friends kindly be very specific in replying those questions because see generally the audit report you may not have a qualitative remark or you may not have any such matter which needs to be uh, uh, you know to be given to the central statutory auditors but LFAR is a questionnaire jaha bahut specific answers you will have to give against those questions please do not write no yes not applicable write complete answer if you have not found any differences any discrepancy please write that in the sample observed or sample selected by you you have not observed any such differences or discrepancy or any deviation from the prescribed circulars guidelines of the bank the main audit report of course is is as defined in the sa 700 but if there is any reference in the main audit report, it must be elaborated in LFR also. So please make sure that LFR has a reference and a detailed uh, you know, observation of whatever the report or observation is given in the audit report in under matters. See, uh, then it acts as a whistleblower for irregularities which are persisting in the branch. It has to be completed. I would suggest everyone that you know usually what happens that we start the LFAR maybe a day or two after we reach the branch. My suggestion would be and my experience is this please start the LFAR on the same day when you reach the branch. Because when you complete 
nahi karoge your audit will not get completed and when you spend time in other areas other than lfar so there are you know observations which get missed documentation mein kuch incomplete information which gets missed and then it will not be covered under the lfar because even while completing lfar you may make a professional judgment whether to downgrade an account based on documents or based on your professional judgment an account could be technically be classified as npa so please carry the lfar portion together along with other areas you will have to divide among the team uh, size which you have created for a particular branch and lfar uh, there is a checklist uh, of advances which would be useful to you so please whatever sample you are selecting for the advances kindly have that checklist filled for each advance you have taken as a sample this checklist would help you to complete the lfar when you finalize on the last day or a day before you are completing the branch generally uh, sbi also have started you know the online system of uploading the lfar now there is a lfar 3 where a codification has to be filled so those of you who have been doing state bank audit there is a codification which is available for lfar 3 so unless you have you know a working paper a checklist which is prepared right from day one you will not be able to complete that codification so aapko each observation then you will have may miss an observation or you may not able to remember if you have not documented so please make lfar checklist of advances observations simultaneously while doing the audit this is uh, just a slide which covers uh, what are are the assets and liabilities in the lfar so i would not spend the first part of lfar is the cash section uh, we as we know the questionnaire has to be filled and uh, if the questionnaire there is a reply which is to be given if there are observation and cannot be filled in the main lfar an extra to be attached with the lfar this is has to be issued in hard copy duly signed issued to the branch with all your observation along with the annexures first in case of cash the cash retention limit of the branch which is fixed by the bank wherever you know you find instances where they have exceeded the retention limit it has to be commented upon and whether this has been reported regularly to the head office or the controlling authorities for any excess beyond the retention limit has to be commented in case the branch has an atm what is the cash limit fixed for atm machines please check that if there is any cash beyond the limit fixed has been informed and intimated to the controlling authority if not done comment upon such deviations adequate insurance cover we all know insurance is generally been obtained by head office for all the branches but in case it has been done by the branch then insurance policy should be uh, adequately checked whether the insurance cover is adequate and is in force for all cash at atm cash on hand and cash is transit if it is done at head office we are obtaining a management representation as compliance with standards on auditing 580 please ensure that you have that point incorporated and it is signed by the branch head effective joint custody two or more official obtain what are the guidelines from the branch with regard to with regard to the custody of vault and atm cash and if there are any deviation you have to comment upon custody of key vaults atm machines is with the staff as mentioned as per the register if there are deviations then have to be reported upon duplicate keys of cash vault and atm what are the guidelines and whether it has to be one key is to be deposited with other branches as per the prescribed guidelines obtain procedures for periodical verification of cash ensure it has been adhered to and if there are any deviations and as per the guidelines prescribed process has not been followed has to be reported upon similarly where you know the uh, there are officials who are not dealing with cash are also part of the verification on monthly basis if there have been evidences available if not then has to be commented upon whether balance in the branch books with respect to cash with atms is also should be tallied with respective atms 
based on the year's calls generated in the ATM. Now, there may be a possibility that you have agents which are appointed for cash feeding in ATM. Please check if the cash with agent is maintained with the branch, then that balance of agency is forming part of cash in hand. But if it is not, then it has to be ensured that a physical verification has been carried out, periodicity of verification has been confirmed, and a balance is confirmed with the agent. If there are any differences, in the same has been reported to the controlling authority. What is the retention limit fixed for cash and custody? And the same has been adhered to. Banks are advised as per the circular dated 3rd of 2013 that if there are any reconciliations or matching claims by the customer in ATM related balances, then the same should represent unclaimed balance and should not be transferred to profit and loss account. So please see if there are any unclaimed balances transferred to PNL. It is not in compliance with RBI circular September 3, 2013. Next section is the balance with Reserve Bank of India, other banks. Now, we need to obtain balance confirmation certificate pertaining to all such accounts. If there are any old, unexplained, unadjusted entries, then details of such entries with reasons has to be given. For example, there is a possibility there are invert clearing checks. Now, if the entries of invert clearing are lying in the reconciliation, and they have not debited to the regular operative accounts of the customer. Now, if there is a borrower ka check hai jo clearing li aaya, which is to be debited, now instead of debiting, they have kept it in the reconciliation. So there is a possibility that that account, because of that debit, becomes NPA. But since the entry is lying in the reconciliation, the account has not become NPA. So please ensure as a, any item of such a reconciliation you have to take a professional judgment, your decision, whether the same should be debit to the individual customer account to make the account NPA. If the confirmation is not received, the same has been commented with the name of the bank and what is the balance which is pending for confirmation. Cash deposited or taken from banks, entries are pending which are unreconciled and unresponded. Kindly check the same has been obtained with reasons. If there are any charges, entry is pending for adjustments and reconciliation that suppose koi invert clearing house charges hai, ya any interest which is overdrawn and there is a debit by the clearing house, then the auditor has to comment in the LFAR and if required, then has to give an MOC if the value of such charges or interest is material. Money at call and short notice, Usually, we have seen the size of the branch we deal. If, uh, it all depends on you know the branch which you are undertaking. Generally, this is looked after by the Treasury Department of the head office. So you usually don't have a balance appearing in the branch books. Kindly confirm there are no transactions which are appearing. If there are transactions in any of the branches you are doing audit, please obtain what are the instructions, guidelines of controlling authority and if there are any compliances to be done, have done, if not, deviations are commented upon. Verify interest accrued up to 31st of March 2020 has been accounted for in the branch book if the balance are appearing. Physical verification on behalf of head office, balance is confirmed and is reconciled. Kindly ensure if the reconciliation is done. If not, same has to be commented upon. Next section is the investment section which is looked after by the treasury of the department of the corporate office and there are specialized branches which takes care of it. So you need to confirm that there are no investments which are appearing in the branch. Obtain a NIL certificate from the branch and comment. But if you have any such investments in the trial balance, please physically verify and check whether physical verification has been conducted and reported. Verify that the balance confirmation which is obtained from the counterpart party is appearing in the books or in the register is reconciled. If there are no certificates which are available, but the investments are appearing in trial balance or branch books, why these certificates are not available, reasons to be obtained, and if they are sent outside the branch, please verify the acknowledgement to confirm certificates are sent outside the branch. <clears throat> 
what is the system of reporting the receipt of income on the investments on behalf of the corporate office ensure income is received on due date due date and is reported at head office also check the investment register at the branch and comment where investment have matured or overdue and same has not been in cash so that part has to be commented upon this is the very important section the advances you know where our real professional ju judgment our experience of understanding of you know the advances uh, there may be uh, auditors i'm sure have been carrying out concurrent auditors regularly they are concurrent auditors and carrying concurrent audit at branches so they must be seeing the advances verifying the advances at regular intervals but as a branch statutory auditor there is a requirement with respect to reserve bank regulator there is a requirement with respect to closing instructions which are issued by the bank and the expectation of central statutory auditors so please ensure that every evidence information is available with you and you to make a reasonable assurance about the disclosure of advances through verification of such advances in the lfar generally this is divided into three parts there is a pre sanction process where we have the credit appraisal and sanction then disbursement where we have the execution of documents and ensuring end use and third is the post disbursement where we have the review monitoring and supervision of the accounts generally advances due to large volume of accounts we do not verify each and every advance account at the branch so how do we select a sample so as per reserve bank polling would be the basis where you could it could help you to select the sample of the advance of the large advances list of advances you'll have to see any such year end balance in excess of 2 crores or 5% of aggregate year end advance of the branch whichever is less should be verified there is an annexure attached to the lfar it is filled by the branch giving all the information of the borrower including any persisting irregularity any deviations deficiencies in the account is covered in the annexure so please obtain all such annexure which is above 2 crores of balance in the large advance is obtained and reported upon advance which are commented by reserve bank inspection team advance which are sanctioned during the year accounts identified to be problem accounts now you have various reports which have been uh, obtained in terms of concurrent credit audit any such inspection report which is carried out at the branch you would find there are a lot of there are certain accounts where a lot of observe, observations or material observation are persisting so please ensure if compliances are not done those all observations are also part of the lfar or if compliance is done obtain a confirmation the same has been complied with and also obtain the compliances till 31st of march if available with the branch or obtain up to february early mortality cases wherever the account slipped to npa within 12 months of introduction is treated as early mortality so when you obtain a list of npa please check if there are such cases should be commented upon in the lfar the first section under the advances like i mentioned it is divided into three parts the first section is the credit appraisal so credit appraisal may you'll have to verify the documents relating to loans what are the procedures which are instructions which are issued by head office controlling authorities on key issue those have been complied in the sample you have selected if there are any deviations the same has to be commented upon auditor should also examine that whether appropriate loan application forms as prescribed by the office has been obtained according to the nature of loan please check with respect to renewal or review of grant of advance enhancement these are recommended after due consideration of factors like financial statements are received which are latest any past dealings repayment capacity of parties we have to verify appraisal whether important information for the borrower have been obtained by the branch officials now when we do a credit appraisal whether the function of the unit is been properly there all securities with respect to primary and collateral security are in order borrower has not deviated from terms and conditions operations are satisfactory and use of loan and if the borrower there are differences in the financial statements which are audited 
and what are the projections which were submitted earlier so these are instances where would help you to comment on the deviation legal documents obtained as prescribed by the bank while sanctioning have been taken executed and filled in case you find there are consortium uh, banks also do consortium uh, advance and multiple banking branch consortium may usually when you have a sanction of fresh loan or any ad hoc loan or any renewal please ensure that a proper confirmation is obtained from the bank the lead bank there is a dt note which is sent <clears throat> every month from the lead bank to the uh, to the, to our branch we are doing the audit that dp note is available on record based on which the dp is calculated for a particular account in our branch so please make sure that all such documents which is to be received in case of lead bank is available in case of multiple banking we have our separate bank account maintained we have a security which is maintained please make sure that wherever there is fresh sanction ad hoc loan or any renewal of loan that is done after obtaining sharing necessary information among the banks a due diligence certificate is obtained in respect of certain loan advances and above in case of consortium and multiple the <clears throat> the lead has to get the due diligence done please obtain a list of such account if the certificates are not available a legal audit of title documents there has a compliance all credit exposure of 5 crores and above to be periodic is has to be done a periodic legal audit and re-verification of title deeds there is a circular of reserve bank of june 7th 2013 kindly obtained it has been suggested that a quarterly legal audit and a re-verification of title deed has to be done this must be ensured and should be available in the branch document the legal doc sanctioning disbursement if the loans are disbursed sanction within the discretionary powers please check the discretionary powers have been complied with if not it has been sanctioned beyond the delegated authority or limit fixed then any cases you have to promptly report or report it to the higher authorities are covered under this part <clears throat> generally in cases we have seen that limit of existing borrowers are allowed to be overdrawn please obtain such cases that wherever there is overdrawing the account has not become npa but overdrawings are frequent the account may be shifted to sma1 or may shift to sma2 but not classified as npa obtain such cases and report accordingly advances which are disbursed without complying with the terms and conditions of sanction like non creation of equitable mortgage unit not inspected personal guarantees to be obtained necessary funds which to be brought to the so some of the instances i have able to now we have seen borrowers are maintaining current accounts with other banks this is a very you know regular feature we observe that credits are not coming in the branch bank account of the customer in the cc account and customer is doing transaction with any private bank maybe maybe hdfc access bank or other banks and the operations have been carried out so please make sure that if there are any such account has been commented upon documentation the second part of the uh, uh, the checking part where we'll have to see if you come across any deviation with respect to the execution of documents as per the circular as per the procedures which is followed or to be followed by the branch the same has been commented upon verify the custody of documents nature of documents defects should be ob observed by the auditor should be should be avoided and should be commented upon usually we have seen there are kuch branches mein documents nahi hote hain documents are centralized they are maintained at a particular branch in a city so please obtain whichever account where the documents are maintained with other branch a list is obtained please in your inquiry letter which you send before commencement of audit you can ask the list of such accounts that documents have been maintained in a centralized branch or a branch which is uh, keeping all the documents obtain a list request the branch to arrange these documents so that they are available before you visit the branch in case you reach the branch give a list immediately so that such documents are available 
or a confirmation is obtained from the auditor who's doing the other branch or if they arrange for a visit to that place maybe you can visit to that branch and verify the sample of uh, advances for the custody of documents report deficiencies if there are deficiency with respect to the document left blank there is no creation of registration of charge being done with respect on mca website there are overwriting joint documentation in case of consortium, consortium advance not obtained if they are inadequately st stamped or documents are time barred so generally documents time barred more than three years as per the limitation act if there are documents which are time barred for more than three years then it, it is it becomes void so please ensure any such document which has the validity has expired are commented upon in case of fdrs if you have find any deviation in the process of marking lien or fdr pledged kindly comment with the details of deviation review monitoring and supervision please check verify whether the branch has followed procedure laid down by the bank for review and renewal is in case there are any deviation in the process the same should be commented upon we can also review the internal inspection the conferent already mentioned and wherever there are adverse remarks which are not complied up to 31st march 2020 should be commented upon obtain a list of accounts which are overdue for review and renewal whether if of course as per the irac norms review renewal more than 180 days to be classified as npa but generally this is, there there are certain doubts or you may have to check on sample basis that there may be certain accounts not appearing in the review or renewal list but still they are not renewed or reviewed more than 180 days so please ensure that list obtained and over and above a confirmation should be obtained that other than this list there are no account which are due for review or renewal for more than 180 days you know the, we have observed cases where the review renewal is just done on a piece of paper so please ensure that there is a prescribed guidelines a procedure which is laid down by the bank for review all the documents which needs to be obtained is obtained and proper review renewal is done not just done like write all the name of the accounts on a piece of paper and you get it signed by the branch head accounts reviewed renewed on so and so date so please comment upon if there are any such deviation whether the borrower is regular in submission of stock statement book debts we've seen generally monthly stock statement are received and officers they calculate dp accordingly if there are any variations between the stock statement received or a unit inspection and the unit inspection done by you or with the uh, audited financials which are received if there are any major variations then has to be commented upon there is a possibility that 31st march 2019 stock appearing the financials may not tally with the march stock statement submitted in april 2019 audit usually is done in the month of august september so stock statement hamara hum april mein submit karte hain jab audit august september mein hota hai to there may be variation aur agar wo huge variation hai to dp accordingly has to be calculated and based on your calculation if the dp is reduced the account may be overdrawn so kindly check there are no material variation between the figures as per stock statement and as on the balance sheet date interest penal interest in case of delay in submission has been charged if there are material should be given in the form of moc if the value wise is very small then you can comment in the lfar and give the list of such accounts where there are delay in charging of penal interest or there are non charger of penal interest obtain stock audit reports as per the requirement of the rbi five crores and above stock audit has to be conducted in case of np account so please ensure that you have stock audit report available verify if there are any deficiency in the reports they've been rectified and if still not rectified should be covered and commented upon inspection of securities has been carried out by the branch at regular intervals tally with the inspection register maintained if there are any 
differences as per the prescribed guidelines, any deviation should be commented upon. Any deficiency in value of security, if there are frequent overdrawings, unauthorized overdrawings, or inadequate insurance cover in the cases examined by you, should be commented upon. If the charges are not being created with registrar of companies or MCA, there is a form CHG1, this receipt or that form is available in the bank record. If they are not available, please comment upon for non receipt or non availability of CHG1 form in order to ensure that the charge is created or not. In case of non corporate entities, as per RBI guidelines with limit beyond 10 lakhs, please ensure audited accounts are available as per RBI guidelines. Valuation reports from approved valuer. In case of NP accounts, if the valuation report is less than three years is accepted, if it is more than three years of old, then the value of security to be made as zero. So please ensure you have a valuation report available and is less than three years. Recovery of credit card dues are done. In case credit card dues are recovered promptly, if not, has to be commented upon. Review monitoring again. If there is any disagreement in classification of what has been classified as NPA by the branch and what you have observed, then you have to give MOC so make suitable changes by incorporating the uh, changes in the MOC. We already shared the master circular dated 1st of July 2015. Uh, copy you can always be downloaded from the Reserve Bank website. List of cases. Where the, where the approval for legal action or recovery of advance is pending, you can obtain such list. What is the current status and why there is delay in recovery of this money? NP accounts are promptly reported to the controlling authority, should be examined and should be commented upon. If there are any account where there is compromise, settlement, or any write off which has been done during the year, should be checked. Obtain a list of such accounts and see there have been the adjustment of the principal, the adjustment of the installment has been done as per the prescribed policy of the bank. Master data, Kaibar differences milte that master data of loan account is not properly updated. Period of loan galat hai, installment galat hai. So because of this reason, you may have the account not appearing in the overdue statement. The account may not be overdue, Whereas other master data may period of loan, the loan uh, uh, amount or the installment amount is changed. The first installment should have been from the earlier date. So account will become NPA. Kindly check if any such account are there should be classified as NPA. Guarantees and letters of credit. Uh, bank guarantees must ensure obtain a list. You should have this list tally with the financial uh, statements, the balance sheet, both the performance as well as the financial guarantee. We have observed cases where a uh, lot of bank guarantees, LCs are expired but not reversed. Friends, this is have to be obtained that any such expired guarantee, whether it is, uh, is in vogue, is debited to the borrower account, any such LC which is devolved is debited to the borrower account because there may be a case there is other account which is open the borrower uh, may not get the debit of lc devolved branch may open another account and because of not debiting the regular operative account the account will not become npa so please check if there are such guarantees which are invoked any such lcs which are devolved you have a list and has been debited to the customer account to the borrower account if the LCs bank guarantees have expired, you have a claim period. You can continue till the claim period get expired if they expire on 31st of March 2020. But please make sure they are reversed if they are old because this would affect the capital adequacy of a particular branch. Agar koi risk zero hai ya SE categorized hai, which is a risk uh, which is less, but because of the reversal. The risk may be high, which would affect the capital adequacy of a branch. So please check the list of LCs and bank guarantees which are expired.
kindly cover it in your audit report as an observation if the branch is not reversing also cover under this section of the lfar obtain certificate that there are no guarantees which are pending which is to be invoked up to 31st march outstanding lcs co acceptance funded by the branch may be obtained from management and reported as per the master circular 4.2.7 this has to be uh, this has for considering funding lc as part of principal operative account for income recognition so please make sure if there are any lcs which are devolved or should be devolved is debited to the customer operative account stationery stamps there is an adequate internal control which is there in place obtain prescribed guidelines from the bank with re with respect to internal controls of this custody like term deposits drafts reports report if there are any loss of such security what is the procedure the branch is following in terms of receipt of requisition slips approval of checkbooks requisition slip are being signed obtaining signature at the time of handing over please check checkbooks not issued lying in stock should be reported if you come across any missing or lost security item which are reported in concurrent internal audit report the same should be commented upon if no missing security or lost security is found by the auditors obtain a letter from the branch manager that there are no missing loss item at the branch this is again suspense account and sundry asset is a very important and a gray area because a lot of debits may be passed through these accounts as of 31st of march so please ensure or that a procedure of clearance of these item in suspense and sundry assets if there are any inadequate or entries which are outstanding beyond the prescribed time any old entries which may be obtained from the branch and reasons for delay in adjusting like there is a possibility that the entries are debited in the asset account to avoid declaring the operating account npa so instead of debiting to the customer operative account there is a debit which is made in the sundry asset account so kindly review kindly check any old debit entries which are there any unadjusted entries which are old should be provided for or should be debited and reversed by transferring to the uh, customer account any shortage of cash debited in the asset account which is pending for recovery should also be commented upon the liability section uh, we have uh, the deposits where we'll have to check what are the guidelines which the bank has followed for inoperative accounts if there are cases of divergence should be commented upon in case we find any operation in inoperative accounts which are permitted please check a request an activation request is received by the customer is available approval of appropriate authority has to be taken as per prescribed procedures deposit ke case mein if there are large movements if you you should obtain a gl of 23rd or 24th of march obtain a gl of 31st of march then also obtain a gl of 7th or 8th or 10th of march uh, of april um, so just check if there are large unusual variation in deposit account if there are variations which you observe between march and april please obtain a clarification for such large movement of deposits and comment upon there is a possibility of window dressing that a customer may have a balance in cc account or cc account ko debit karke deposit create kar diya so cc account is also within limit and debit or deposit is created so there is a possibility of window dressing so any such movement in last week of march and april kindly check and report upon tds effect of tds on interest at the time of credit is verified and is checked whether tds is deducted as per the system which is in place at the branch any overdue matured term deposits there is an rbi circular which says any overdue term deposits which are there at the branch should be reported and saving bank interest to be charged on such overdue mature term deposit the saving bank interest is centrally debited at head office we just have to report the overdue mature term deposit under this section of the lfr fdrs jo scheme based fdrs hain jo cbs mein they have been created but with zero rate of interest so those are Uh, obtain a list and report account 
verify that dormant accounts more than 10 years are transferred to depositors education the def account circular of reserve bank of india of 27th may 2014 should be checked and any such dormant accounts which are more than 10 years should be transferred to def account other liabilities bills payable sundry deposits if you find any old outstanding entries pending for three years in bills payable deposits obtain reasons and report under the appropriate head verify entries relating to material withdrawals or debit in these accounts if there are any unusual transactions kindly comment upon under this section contingent liability we find that banks may claims which are not acknowledged as debts there are uh, legal cases going on a uh, case like payment of taxes any consumer court or any other court there is a list which the bank give to you this is the legal cases pending your claims and your bank not acknowledges debt kindly go through that list and if there are any provisions to be made from the list yeah what is the current status of this uh, these cases and if you find the provisions have to be done give an moc for all the provisions or confirm obtain a copy keep it as a working paper that no provision is required to be done obtain a management representation if you find that bank loss is clear and identified and not disputed then we should recommend and give an moc for all such contingent liability to make it uh, up to make the provision profit and loss account what is the system uh, the finding out if any discrepancies are there in interest discount and what is the process of adjustment to be done timely if there are any deviations should be commented upon you have to refer concurrent audit report internal inspection revenue audit reports to ensure and test check further that any such interest discounts which is to be given effect in profit and loss account or which has impact on the financial statement should be given through an moc another very important thing friends i would like to add that please if there are any uh, issues with respect to the impact on the financial statement should be given in the form of moc or should be covered in the audit report as part of an annexure to the audit report or under the observation or other matters in lfar wherever the moc is not given because any such information which you want to be informed to central statutory auditors should be part of the audit report. I mentioned in my uh, initial opening remarks that LFAR usually is seen is completed 60 days after financial statements are signed. So if there is any observation that the LFAR has given you and not made part of audit report, the auditor may not see sometimes LFAR. So kindly cover it in the other matters under in the audit report and also cover it in the LFAR. Accessional reports to be generated, verify if there are any interest in all accounts have been applied and there are no discrepancy. Any excess short credit of material amount to be noticed should be covered and given MOC. Wherever you on your test check you find cash credit OD accounts where DP has been correctly and regularly updated in the computer. Please ensure that there is a DP register and in case penal interest is to be debited, is debited as per the norms prescribed by the bank. Instructions issued by the banks for charging and recognizing interest on NP accounts, please check though interest should be debited. What are the guidelines, whether the branch has complied Auditor has to comment in case MOC is to be given, should be recommended. System of estimating providing interest accrued already discussed. There is an RBI circular where a saving bank interest on unclaimed deposits, overdue mature deposit has to be debited, which is done at central level. Kindly report whatever the overdue mature deposits under the relevant section of LFR. Do a comparative analysis of all the items do an analytical review of all the items of profit and loss account. If there are any major variations, plus minus 10%, kindly obtain reasons from the branch in writing. Aap apna ek variations ka ek letter banai, give it in writing to the branch and please obtain reasons for such variation. There is a possibility 
कोई मेजर वेरिएशन हो और एनी अकाउंट विच इज रॉन्गली डेबिटेड और शुड हैव बीन डेबिटेड हैज नॉट बीन डेबिटेड या एनी रीजन ऑफ इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस शोइंग वाइस वर्सा शुड बी ऑप्टेन एंड शुड बी कमेंटेड अपॉन और एम ओ सी टू बी गिवेन सो प्लीज मेक दिस डॉक्यूमेंट एज पार्ट ऑफ योर वर्किंग पेपर ऑप्टेन इन राइटिंग फ्रॉम द ब्रांच हेड वॉट एवर मेजर वेरिएशन आर देयर इन इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस अकाउंट generally now books and records we usually don't have manual book register being maintained at the branch if there are any kindly check in authenticated written and legible manner and there are no overwritings in case of computerized branch kindly check there are exceptional reports obtain the list what are the computerized branch uh, what are the what is the list which is maintained uh, in the computer for computerized branches like exceptional transaction cash roll gls all such list should be obtained and being generated aajkal it is every branch do it on daily basis they generate but they don't print you can always ask for such reports exceptional reports during the last week of transaction should be obtained and should be verified areas which are handled by the branch on computers obtain a list keep it as a working paper what are the access and data security measures which are available password protection change of password employee koi chala gaya chhod ke to uska login id or password has been deleted all such access of data security measures of uh, should be complied with any important files files restricted are password protected awareness of security guidelines to the branch official what is the system of backup usually backup system is centralized but please understand and obtain what is the system of backup at the branch adequate contingency and disaster recovery plan is in place for loss or encryption of data reconciliation of control and subsidiary records most in all the branches now are under cbs are computerized so generally you will not have any such reconciliation but because there are differences pre migration jab branch migrate hui computer mein but there is a possibility koi migration difference was created or difference between sub gl and gl was created that difference is still continuing so kindly check if any such material difference is there at the time of migration the differences are appearing and reported in the lfr otherwise most of the branches now are computerized and reconciliation is done through system similarly inter branch accounts they are all computerized branches and the process of reconciliation has been discontinued so you may have to come in that verify that the balance of head office account is reported daily in the statement but since they are computerized it is always available in the system and is taken care centrally any outstanding debits in the head office account in respect of inter branch if there are any appearing in the reconciliation or any debits which are appearing under sundry assets with respect to reversal kindly check or any debit which are there with respect to charges provision should be done any old large outstanding transaction entries at the debit at the year end unexplained in relating and relating to inter branch adjustment should be brought in moc or should be provided for or if they are less than a certain period should be reported audit inspection audits what are the audits which are carried out if any material deviations are there any observations which are not been rectified any persistent irregularity which are not been taken care at the branch while obtaining the list of all such audits which are done kindly ensure all the compliances of observations are taken care by the branch before 31st if not the same should be covered as adverse remarks in these reports and incorporate in the lfr if they are still containing various adverse features persisting in the branch should also be brought out in these audit and if they are brought out in these audit and inspection should be covered in lfr frauds which are discovered during the year minimize what is the process the branch has taken or what to minimize the possibility of their occurrence kindly ensure that fraud reported to the controlling authority to the vigilance department by the head office uh, to the head office during the year by the branch if branch do not have adequate system in place for early early warning signals regarding fraudulent activity it should be
commented upon and examined what is the system of follow up what is if there are dispute on title deed of collateral security fraud there is a circular of reserve bank of india for making provision please make sure a list of fraud is being sent to local head office to the controlling authority whatever fraud has been identified during the year because the provision as per the rbi circular has to be done for each quarter 25% and entire fraud provision uh, 100% by the end of the year possible window dressing we have already discussed in terms of deposits if there are unusual movements what is uh, the value dated transactions if there are any exception reports available what is the process for maintenance of fixed assets record physical verification has been done by the branch depreciation are usually taken care at head office the entries are done centrally in the branch but please check the physical verification at regular intervals have been done there is a fixed assets record maintained and tallies with the statement provided to you for fixed assets cash withdrawal deposits of more than 10 lakhs if any overdue locker rents vacant lockers atm related issues any other matter which you want to be informed to the central statutory auditor should be commented upon now uh, there are branches who are dealing in forest foreign exchange transactions uh, this is the section where branches dealing in forex transaction has to be commented upon by the auditor please check the concurrent internal auditors report or any reserve bank if the reserve bank inspection reports are available and audit has been done by reserve bank any adverse features with respect to nre nre account nro account or fc rbe fc and similar deposit accounts where there there is pending for resolution and if there are issues which still persist should be commented upon what are the instructions and guidelines of controlling authorities in relation to foreign exchange kindly obtain and if there are any deviation should be commented upon no stro accounts jo agar branch ke paas maintain hai to this is an account which is maintained uh, by uh, branch outside india so if there is a no stro account there is a reconciliation done there is a confirmation obtained please check a confirmation is obtained before 30 as on 31st of march and before 31st march you have a reconciliation and the balance are reconciled <clears throat> verify any debit entries pending for reversal and reconciliation if there are any re non reversals what is the impact of such non reversals agar koi debit entry hai which has to be debited to the customer account or to the operative account of the customer and parked in reconciliation the same should be debited as on 31st of march or before 31st of march and for this debit the account may become empty so kindly check such entries in the reconciliation which should be debited to the customer or the borrower account there are chances of unauthorized payments from no so kindly verify the confirmations are received reconciled and no unreconciled lying entries which are pending for reversal this section where large advances the ifb branches were in excess of 100 crores the process is uh, the same you will follow except that this particular section has to be filled we obtain advances in a prescribed format ek anexer jo banta hai wo already ek format hai which is signed by the branch manager which gives all the details of the advances any adverse features which are there non operative for quite a long time without adequate appraisal or disbursement without appropriate approval and you feel it has to be important and draw attention to the central auditors or to the management should be commented upon obtain cases where it is reclassified as npf to standard or vice versa and give details and reasons of reclassification asset recovery branches again is a section where some of you may be doing asset recovery management branches so kindly ensure that this part of the questionnaire is duly filled adverse features like non operating for a quite long time renewed without adequate appraisal or disbursement without appropriate approval auditor 
please verify and comment whether there is a system of periodical obtainment and updation of valuation of security charged to the branch. What is the details of recovery suit file cases? Obtain a list and pending cases which are outstanding and what is the status of the suit? In case of decree, kindly ensure that branches is prompt in execution of decree. If not, same should be reported. Why the decree is time barred should also be reported with reasons. List of recovery in NP accounts in case of interest in principle, how the same is being closed and adjusted, how the revenue is being recognized, whether the RBI guidelines for account and the accounting principles of the bank has been consistently followed. If there are new account transferred to the branch, please check the documents relating to these accounts obtained from the transferor branch, obtain confirmation that all the documents have been transferred. If you find any adverse feature that has on transfer of the documents, kindly report cases. Branches dealing in clearing house operations should be covered, uh, should cover the following checklist. Periodic review of outstanding entries has been done. Prescribed system of review and follow up adhered to. Review of clearing adjustments and breakup of old entries. So this section where inward and outward clearing should be commented upon. Whether branch follows guidelines of controlling authority of the bank with regard to operating or operations relating to clearing transactions. The same if not followed should be reported and the deviation should be commented upon. So this was the uh, section uh, of the LFAR, which uh, my experiences, whatever I could uh, learn over the period and as per the RBI, as per the uh, bank, and as per the requirement of our institute guidance note, I have able to compile all the observations and the comments which needs to be given in the LFAR questionnaire. This is just uh, the important work to be ensured. Uh, I have uh, sum up once you complete the entire work, pre you prepare a draft audit report, the documents, you uh, keep it with you, you quantify and discuss the MOCs, you prepare the final report. Then if there are any points which are open and has to be commented upon in the final report, kindly discuss the entire observations of report commented upon and the questionnaire, the LFAR with the branch head before it is finally signed. Generate UDIN for statutory audit, LFAR tax audit and hand over the final set working papers and the attendance from the branch manager. These are certain formats which I have prepared internally for bank branch audit. I would uh, be happy to share if the branch requests me this the audit program, the engagement letter is as per the ICAI guidance note and as per the standards on auditing. The branch inquiry letter which we sent, the checklist, I have a small checklist which would help you to prepare the advances, observations and compile them effectively so that LFR can be done timely. Format of audit report, then latest LFR format, RBI circulars, management representation and master circular. So all these are available and whatever formats I have made for my branch audit, I'll share it with the branch. This are the list of master circulars I've just added in the end and the master directions, which may be useful. You can go through and download these relevant circulars from the Reserve Bank website and can be used to have an effective branch audit. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Ahmedabad branch for giving me this opportunity in case there are any questions if there are any issues which could be responded now or can be done later as the branch decide or you can speak to me or uh, call me uh, or send me over mail uh, any such observations which you have so thank you branch for giving me this opportunity and thank you participants for for your patient hearing thank you thank you very much abhay bhai can you hear me Yes. Thank you very much, Abhayji, for sharing this in for your insightful presentation on the subject of this LFAM. And it was really, really very interesting and informative. We appreciate the time you have taken for being with us and for sharing your knowledge on the subject.
sir uh, on behalf of branch i would like to request that kindly share the checklist and the documents which you have for which you have prepared this uh, for the effective audit of the bank branch my request to you would be that we will be highly obliged if you can save the same with the branch no, that no, will be need not to mention uh, highly obliged i'll i'll be happy to share it with <laughs> all the thank you thank you very much and there are one one or two questions which i have received that i would definitely like to share with you for a ek second na see the first question was that how to conclude about the value of security especially of immovable property since such value has bearing on the classification and provisioning aspect especially when value is eroded in covid 19 situation if no, there is any if the uh, can uh, your voice voice is uh, not clear hitesh bhai can you can you just speak again see the the question is from a member is how to conclude about the value of security hmm. of immovable property okay if if in such value has bearing on the classification and provisioning aspect especially the when the value has eroded in covid 19 situation see uh, uh, first thing is covid 19 situation is very recent see that is see before i would say it is only after 20th of march the covid 19 situation has arisen now of course uh, you know the it started initially say in a uh, couple of weeks in march but effective i would say after 15th or 20th of march the covid situation has arisen so the valuation of security between say 15th of march till 31st of march would not really have any impact on the classification what is important is when the account has been disbursed sanctioned there is a proper appraisal which is done the valuation has been obtained there is a value who gives the valuation of security there is a bank's internal guidelines of valuing a particular security and those are already obtained and available on record only thing what we need to ensure is they are not older than a certain period of time we have audited financial statements which are available we can always check the immovable property from the financial statements latest available to ensure that if there are properties which are uh, may, uh, which are appearing in the financial and what is the valuation bank is taking if there are material differences then of course the reasons to be obtained but the valuation report latest is available with you on record based on which you can decide whether the value uh, or the loan is fully secured or to what extent it is unsecured because covid 19 would not really have any impact on the valuation part exactly that would be yes, of course when you go to the next year 2021 you may have the impact in 2021 but may not be in this year not for this year yes sir the hmm. second question is that whether the fraud detected during the audit period or earlier earlier period in the branch that hmm. amount to contingent liability for the branch whether it is to be considered as the contingent liability for the branch and hmm. whether the same is to be reported in statutory report uh see so far as the fraud is not confirmed there is still a, you know the fraud correspondence or between the one who has done fraud and with the branch if it is not confirmed till 31st of march 2020 that it is a fraud which is definitely a fraud has been identified but it is not confirmed but once identified has to be reported to the controlling authority one confirmed then the controlling authority will make a provision till that time it would appear in the contingent liability perfect and 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 if it is if it is not during if it is not found during the year then in that case what will happen it is you have if if it is prior to a year you are doing the audit then you have to see the the current status of fraud provision definitely is taken care at the local head office in case of state bank and uh, in case of the head office is sent to the head office of the bank but you will have to see the current status of fraud if uh, the provisions are not done in earlier years and 
looking to the current status provision is required to be done should be commented upon sir next question is about the udin that in case of stock certificate what to do if the udin is not found on the certificate or fake udin is found see um, you and me being you know uh, a professional and a member of ICI have to issue a UDN, but this is every member's responsibility because not issuing a UDN is in contravention of counseling guidelines and may attract disciplinary action against the member. Now, if you don't have a UDN, then I would not accept this authentic document. Whoever has signed the chartered accountant, you have to ask the branch to go back to him, ask him to generate a UDN, write the UDN and confirm back to you. If a UDN is wrongly mentioned in the certificate, then also the situation is the same that the branch has to confirm from that CA that whether he or she has signed the stock statement and confirm the correct UDN from that member. Right, sir. Sir, the one last two questions that how can we know the discretionary power of sanctioning authority, particularly in case of sanction by the authority other than the branch? See, uh, there is there are prescribed guidelines which are and uh, procedures which are available with the branch for discretionary powers. If the powers are not in the branch to sanction or disburse loan above a certain amount, then the same is done by a committee. Now, there is a guideline which you have to ask the branch who is the approval authority. Now, if the approval authority is zonal office because branch say has a certain limit of one crore then zonal office also have an hierarchy that up to the gm he can do above 25 or 50 crores or 100 crores or even 500 crores then below that there is a dgm of a particular regional office who can do it so this this guidelines you have to ask the branch which they'll provide which would give you the powers of the branch powers of controlling authority and the head office so based on the uh, the amount of loan which is sanctioned and disbursed you have to check whether those compliances of guidelines have been done right sir then whether the valuation report is compulsory for all the account irrespective of the amount or is there any limit of getting the valuation of security see it is uh, if you have a, a security which is uh, given to the bank as part of the loan then a valuation has to be obtained because uh, how do I decide because I personally as a chartered accountant or signing the financial I am not a technical expert so we need to get a valuation report from the valuer and have it on the record whatever the value because see the, uh, the valuation even if you have a small housing loan there is a valuer who's giving a valuation report of that house so irrespective of the value of loan, the valuation report should be available. If not, reasons for the same should be obtained from the branch or should be uh, straight away classified for non-security available the, as for the IRAC norms. Right, sir. And the last question is about the, say in, in case of State Bank of India, now they have started this bank guarantee audit. If the bank guarantees are classified as high risk, then the margins are required to be increased. Should we also check whether the increased margin is taken or it is out of our purview? See, it is not out of your purview. If it is part of the branch, a bank guarantees are issued by the branch, then you have to check as per the guidelines. It is not out of your purview because if it is appearing in the balance sheet as contingent liability, of that branch the list is available of the bank guarantee it has to be verified by the auditor perfect thank you thank you very much sir over to bishan bhai thank you Adesha. yes thank sir you. Uh, i am very much thankful to abhay sir and definitely hitesh bhai pumal of our rcm on behalf of ahmedabad branch of wrc of icai I am thankful to all the participants for coming here on this platform on this Sunday and definitely to a learned faculty who has also come and delivered here on this Sunday morning and enlighten all of us in this 
big season of bank audit definitely it's going to be started as we are knowing and as this bhai has uh, said that uh, some banks have started appointments so it's really a fruitful and a need of a time sir thank you very much thank you we are going to meet tomorrow morning at 10:30 am for the last session i request all to join at that time thank you thank you vishnu bhai thank you kanal for giving me this opportunity thank you.